Hey guys, Lawrence Aponte here, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up dynamic product ads using Shopify and Facebook. So before we get into the uh, configuration, um, I'll go ahead and explain what dynamic product ads are. What they are, they allow you to promote relevant products to your shoppers or um, anybody that's browsed your products on your website or mobile app. So what exactly does that mean? That means that when somebody comes to your site, um, they get pixelized. Facebook collects that data. So then when you um, run DPA ads, you can retarget these people based on certain roles that you set, such as um, certain products that they viewed or added to cart. Another great thing about dynamic product ads is that it actually allows you to promote all of your products without having to make an ad for each individual one. So I know like I have a general store with thousands of products in it and there's just no way that I'd be able to, you know, promote all of those products unless I did, you know, a thousand different campaigns for each individual product. And with DPA ads, um, it's pretty easy to set up. And you pretty much forget about them and um, let's kind of get into it then so in this video what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to set up your pixel using the new way it's really fast and easy to do um, I'm gonna show you if you're running like a general store a unique way so you can configure your products so your DPA ads continue um, they can be extremely relevant to your visitors I'm also going to show you how to upload your catalog, configure your product sets, and then in the end, we'll go ahead and create an ad um, showing you everything. So we'll go ahead and... All right, so here we're in uh, Shopify's back office. The new easy way that you can just set up your pixel is just go to settings, click on online store, and then down here is a little section that says Facebook pixel. So you go to your ads manager and you just go to the settings here when find where it says assets pixels and you click on the pixel right there. Okay, so this will come here and it'll tell you, you know, something uh, of the sort. And you can actually just come here and hit actions view pixel code and then it's this number right here. And you just copy that hit done come back to your store and it's literally just paste and that's there all right so now I'm gonna show you guys um, what app you're gonna need to make your product catalog in this case and it's called the Facebook product feed and it's really simple you actually you just go to the the app store here and you search for it Facebook product feed right there and you would just hit get in this case we already have it so it won't it won't install it so it's there so once you go there you want to make sure that you have this box here check format feed for the native Shopify pixel setting and save that Okay, now when you um, are adding products to a general store, the best practice and unique way that I, I like to do it, which would, configures it really nice for DPA ads, is to use this type where it says type and use it as the niche name. So in this case, it's like a survival niche. So I just put survivor. So for each individual product, for the type, you want to make sure that it corresponds with the niche so here this is a, a cat um, ring so it has cat chihuahua items they all have chihuahua and the reason being is that when a customer goes to any one of these um, products here and uh, say the type is chihuahua then they'll get targeted for anything that has to do with chihuahua and that becomes very important when you're running DPA ads because you don't want to for instance, send somebody to a Chihuahua page and then later retarget them with a car alarm because it just is not going to be really um, extremely relevant or some type of shovel or something like that. You know, it's just not going to be relevant. So that's 
um, important and, and a lot of people don't um, use that because I get targeted all the time and you can see that the relevancy is not there. So the, um, the best way is just to set it as the type. Now once you have those set up, we're going to go to the apps here and grab these product feed um, link. This is going to have all of our products. And we're going to copy that here. And then we'll just come here and go to catalogs. And what we'll do is we'll add a new product catalog, create a new one, and we'll just name this one test and create that. Let's get this. You select the pixel that the catalog is attributed to. So in this case, it's that one. And we'll hit OK. OK. So once you come here, you just click Add Product Feed. And you would like to, I like to do it as a scheduled reoccurring upload. So every morning, you know, the new feed gets uploaded if I added new products or not. And this is where you would enter your, your product feed. Now, it's very important to note that when you put your product feed in here, if you have any type of variance on your stores, um, you have to put a special code. So when I mean variance, it, it would be something like, this Chihuahua shirt, for example, we have a bunch of different sizes. So those are variants. So if you have any type of rings that have like a bunch of different sizes that they're essentially all the same one, you want to put in this special code in advanced settings here. And you just want to copy this only first available variant. And then you come here and you want to put question mark and then paste it. And the reason being you want to do that is because if you have variant products, um, the DPA ads will pull each individual one. So if when they see the product, they would show, for instance, in the Chihuahua shirt, it would show them the small, the medium, the large, the extra large. And you don't want that because essentially it's the same product. So you want them to just grab the only first available variant. So it's very important that you do that if you have different variants. And you just hit upload and it will go through these four steps. And while it does that, I'll pause the video because it can take a couple of minutes. Okay, as you can see, it's done uploading. It's uploaded 14 of 14 products. Um, there's two warnings here. And one here is it'll tell you this image here is too small. So if you want to um, correct it, It'll show you. So I guess it's just saying this image is just too small. So it's just letting you know that it's probably not going to be shown properly. And, um, and then also here, 14 products are affected. This here, this Google product category is if you're going to do anything with Google Shopping. In this case, we're not going to um, dive into that. But if you were to want to sell on Google Shopping, you would need to set up your Google product categories and then it, they would sync it correctly. But because we're not doing that, we won't dive into that. So now that you have your catalog set up, what you want to do is create product sets. In, um, when you're creating product sets, this is for this general store. You want to um, segment your products. So in this case, we're going to do it. Um, based, we'll do it based on the type, as I showed you earlier in the video. So we'll do this one. Name it cat and you would want to select product type is any of these and you'd want to put cat so what does that do is it says you are creating a product set with four of 14 products so four of my 14 products have cat in it so now anybody that goes to the, any product that's cat we can retarget them with one, um, those four products and essentially, as you add more products and you change the type to cat, they will automatically feed into these product sets. So we'll create another one. Um, Chihuahua, because I know that one is a type. Okay. And you would just continue to create all of them um, as you have them and as they come in. So in this case, I'll just create two for the purpose of it. And what we'll do now is we'll go to Power Editor, because that's where you create your um, product catalog ads. OK. 
Okay, it's going to tell me to add a payment. That's okay. We can create it for the example. So what we'll do is we'll just create a campaign. Okay, and we'll just name this one DPA ads. Okay, and then you find where it says product catalog sales. And the product catalog name is test as we said it earlier. And then this one here, um, I like to name my ad sets after the items that I'll be promoting. So we'll just name this one Chihuahua. And then we'll just name this test and we'll create that. Okay, so now we'll go to the ad set level here and we'll edit this. So this is where you would select which products you want to promote. So in this case, because um, we're gonna do one for Chihuahua, we'll just select Chihuahua. So it's, it'll show you here in the corner that there's five products available for Chihuahua. So um, essentially as you add more products to Chihuahua, that will automatically um, populate there. So we'll just leave that ad set there at $5. Now the audience, you can select different combinations of audience just depending on how you want to do it. It's really all about testing and how you want to. Um, but you can just go through different ones here and select which one is best suited for you. Um, we'll just keep this one at the default, which is view. So this ad here is going to be shown to people that viewed or added to cart but didn't purchase and that's going to include all products from Chihuahua so anybody that's viewed Chihuahua added it or added it to the cart and did not purchase this dynamic product ad is going to go towards them so this is um, you can set it for the different ones as you can see like upsell product like maybe they bought something from Chihuahua and you want to retarget them with some new items or cross sell or maybe they added to a cart um, you want to do that. You can do it up to 180 days. So I like to just max it out right there. And I like to leave everything here defaulted, no interest, because I just want them to get, they're just being retargeted. You can test this placement here to your liking. Maybe you want to split test desktop and mobile. But for the sake of the example, I'll just leave it defaulted. And then here for optimization and pricing, um, I like to test both uh, different ones. So I'll try like link clicks for this one. So this might be my ad set Chihuahua for link clicks. And then I'll I'll duplicate this one, the next one. And then I'll do it for conversion events, you know, based on either add to cart or purchase, whatever I feel like um, I can start off with. And once you have your ad set done, that's it with there. And we'll go to the actual and make the ad. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just choose a random page here. Okay. Obviously, we do, you would want to choose, you know, a fan page that's relevant. So if I had a fan page that said, you know, I love Chihuahuas, it would be great. So as you can see, it pulled all of the Chihuahua products. Okay. You see them all there. So it looks really nice. Everything is relevant except the fan page. If I had a Chihuahua fan page, it would just be super spectacular. But I don't. So we'll come down here. And here you would put the website URL that you're promoting. In this case, because it's a test store, um, we'll just you know, test.com. Um, the display URL. Oh, that actually came up here for that. That's funny. So the display URL, you can, um, it'll show, let's, uh, Chihuahua stuff. H -Q -A. It'll show like a display URL that'll automatically populate. Um, I'll test or it should show it there but it, it normally would change it back here but either way this is all optional you'd want to do it to your liking um, so this text here I like to keep something pretty general um, be sure to check out all of our new um, in this case it's Chihuahua items okay and I always like to do use promo code DPA 50 or 10 for a 10 percent off or for, for a 10 percent 
discount. That way you can track it so it see exactly you know what, what's going on if people are using it, whatnot. For the headline, what I like to do is just use the name, whatever the product name is, and then for the news feed description, if you offer free shipping, you know for your store you could do something like that, and then it'll show up in the bottom. Um, you can also type some stuff here if you wanted to, you know, and it'll show up as a headline. Um, I like just using the product name and if I'm offering either free shipping or I will use the price here. Um, to show the price. I mean, it just it's just really up to you. It's about testing and uh, seeing what works. So for the example, like I said, I'll just use that. Um, price. And then the call to action, we'll just use shop now. And then if you're gonna use any type of URL parameters, this is where you would input it here. So in this case, we'll use UTM equals uh, DPA. These are link clicks. That way you can actually track and see what's going on in Google Analytics. So yeah, that's the sum up of how you set up your DPA ads. Um, and you would just, you know, review your changes and that's it. And essentially, I mean, if you have a general store, you want to have a bunch of different product sets and different ads just dynamically being sent here. So the goal is to just send people to one offer, one main offer here and just dynamically retarget them with the same different kind of products. Um, these convert really well. And, uh, and I hope that video helped you set them up. If you have any questions, just let me know. Hit me up. Till next time, man. Lawrence Aponte. Peace.